Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and reptiles alike, my name's Seth, and we are back. You have some more trolls. Patch notes. I know that it's already like a week later, and we're talking about the U10 update and the or the Crystal Combat update, as they call it. Even though it doesn't literally doesn't change anything about the combat, other than adding a new stat that finds uh, generally is very confusing for a lot of people. So, um. I already had this video talking about the update on the test server. Not much has changed from that patch to the one that we've got here on the live server. So we will kind of take that for an experience. And, you know, it's like if you guys want to see the entirety of the patch notes, you can refer to that other patch notes video. I'll leave a link in the description. Because today we're just going to kind of highlight the main bits of the update and all of the stuff uh, that's actually like important and worth noting about, which is going to be uh, the crystal gear, uh, maybe talk about the new dragons a little bit, just kind of in passing, uh, and then the five star dungeons and so on and so forth. Now that we also, uh, I myself personally have a lot more experience with the update. Uh, because now it's actually on the live server, so I've obviously invested a lot more time into it. Uh, and we can also kind of talk about the differences that they made from the test server to the live server in the numbers, how the drop rates work, and how it's ultimately not that good. Like, the you know, the update is definitely hype, don't get me wrong, but clearly they kind of fail at math, as per usual. But anyways, we'll get right into it. Be sure to hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. So the Geo Topside Adventure Worlds, uh, they lie and say that there's three new worlds that can be found, um, three new biomes that can end up being found, but it's not three, it's in fact just one new biome with a bunch of different generations. Uh, but now on PC, we actually have access to the Trovian Atlas, which is hidden behind my camera right here, uh, and we can just access this at any point, so it does single-handedly make portals, like uber portals and adventure portals and stuff like that. It makes them absolutely useless, which is great. It's it's a good thing. It really is. Like, I, I really love the fact that we have the Atlas and can just warp any time that we want. Uh, it is still taking me a little while to end up getting used to it, however, but most of all, we've got the two, uh, or the three new areas, which is going to be U8 topside, U9 topside, and U10 topside. Uh, each of these worlds are going to end up having various uh, drops that they can end up having as well as a five-star dungeon So they're gonna have one-star dungeons three-star dungeons and five-star dungeons and the five-star dungeons are gonna give you a resource That is required in order to end up leveling the new crystal gear, which is the new tier of gear There's also cosmic gems which are gonna be not a new tier of gems But just a new set of gems that you can end up equipping uh, onto your character's gem slots And I have other videos that go into more detail about all of the gems and about the ideal stats that you want uh, about the empower gem abilities so on and so forth but we'll we'll touch upon it very lightly in the patch notes today because i don't want this video to be an hour long hopefully we can be under that uh but then there's two new resources in the top side biome which is going to be viridian and nitro which uh the nitro is going to be kind of the pink ore and the viridian is going to be the green ore these ores are used to craft various of the new costumes and stuff like that um, then there's also the, uh, I love how they say the geo top side is affected by daily bonuses. The reason why they say this, which this is ridiculous. It frustrated uh, so many players, myself included. I actually think that this is stupid in that, uh, the devs ended up making a lame excuse for the geode cave system that patron was not going to affect the geode caves because it is a different planet. That was their lame excuse to end up making it so that they didn't have to make patron work with the geode caves, which honestly would have made the caves a lot more balanced because we would have been able to get 10 times more ore. It also would have been affected by the daily bonuses of getting more ore, um, so on and so forth, right? And then they just do a complete 180 and uh, all of this is just normal combat. So of course this is all affected by patron and the daily rewards. So it's like, okay, devs, like seriously, that was absolutely stupid. Shame on them for that. Uh, recipes have also been added to the crystal bench on the uh, uh, hub area here. There, there's also going to end up being as you hop into the geo top side, there's going to be a bench right in front of your face that you can end up crafting crystal gear at. That's just going to be crystal one. There's uh, different tiers of crystal. There's crystal one, crystal two, crystal three. Obviously, they're just going to end up changing in the amount of stats that they end up having. You can only get crystal ones out of Uber eight. It is not affected by magic find. You can have zero magic find and you can still end up getting a crystal drop. That said, 
Uh, if you end up having more magic find, you're going to get more crystal drops. Now, I don't know how that affects uh, crystal two and three. However, I don't know if those actually require a certain amount of magic find or if uh, again, they're just going to end up being extremely uncommon with zero magic find, but more common with higher magic find values, while still ultimately being able to have a, a, a drop kick in, even if you had no magic find. Now, with U9, you're going to get those crystal ones again, but you're also going to have the chance of crystal two and crystal 10 uh, or U10 is going to end up being the same thing with crystal three gear being extremely rare. Even for myself, I've only had six of them drop and uh, three of them were fist weapons from my Vanguard that I couldn't use. Now, they've also ended up adding a bunch of different crafting things, uh, including some mounts and junk. The crystalline cores are the biggest problem with this update because you have to, like, if you're wondering why I have so much, is because I did an unboxing video of the greater caches, obviously, because otherwise, this is essentially going to be 25 five-star dungeons in order to end up getting these crystalline cores. It's pretty bad uh, as you end up going higher and higher up the food chain because suddenly all of these things start costing more and more, and they literally want you to grind, like, over a thousand five-star dungeons and that's just for crafting components alone for costumes and new items let alone we're not even going to talk about how expensive it is to upgrade crystal three gear it's actually ridiculous and this is my biggest complaint about the update is that it wasn't that bad when it was on the test server because what they ended up doing uh guys is they ended up nerfing the amount of crystal cores you could end up getting from five star dungeons before the update went live so even on the test server we were able to max out our crystal three gear you know relatively easily most of all uh, you gotta consider though that this this is somebody like myself these are the people that know life this game we were able to max out some crystal three sets and I, though I think that it did need to be nerfed a little bit, they went too far in the wrong direction. Most of all, because they ended up making it so that the crystalline cores are that much rarer to get. And they were supposed to have nerfed all of the crafting recipes for all the costumes and all the different crystal gear and stuff like that. But unfortunately, they actually did the opposite with the crystal three gear and made it more expensive to forge up the crystal three while simultaneously making the crystalline cores less often. So you can't get them as often. And one of my biggest complaints and criticisms with this update is this. These style caches are clearly broken, devs. Like, I, I don't know why they won't listen to me. I keep tweeting them about how broken these are because uh, in order to end up getting all of the different geode styles, this is a geode style stash. It's going to give you one mastery per for a new style, right? Uh, there is 122 new styles total. I already calculated it all there. You need 122,000 crystal alone, six, uh, 61K Viridian, 6.1K Nitro, 12.2K build right, and 6.1 thousand crystalline cores, which essentially for a free-to-play player is going to end up being uh, the equivalent of over 6,000. 6 thousand five-star dungeons never mind all the other dungeons just five-star dungeons all for some styles that you're not gonna like because they're all pretty gross and a measly 122 mastery yikes dude so anyways i don't mean to get into that i, I just wanted to kind of tackle the crystalline stuff and get that out of the way so let's hop on over to the geo top side we'll talk very briefly about the five-star dungeons and how they uh, ended up making them pretty useless uh, because originally, uh, here's that crystal crafting table, by the way, that I mentioned. These are always going to generate with the second stat or third stat on crystal gear because light squeezes its way into the second stat. But it, it's not as confusing as it sounds. Pretty much the second stat of gear on every other piece of gear in the game is going to end up being the third stat on crystal gear. But it is still going to count as the second stat as far as the code is concerned. But the, anyways, these are always going to generate with jump as the second stat. So keep that in mind. You're not going to be using these until the end game. Now, that said, having the extra jump is definitely welcomed because uh, this area requires a lot of it. Like, you seriously need so much jump. Now, this is a five-star dungeon. We got pretty lucky because all these people are actually over here and already doing it. Ignore all the mods that I'm rocking. We're trying some stuff out. But you can see the timer at the top of the corner, uh, the top middle of the screen, right? So as you end up completing the five-star dungeon, uh, first of all, you can see that this skull right here that's activated already means that it is going to end up being an elite boss, whereas these other ones that aren't activated are going to end up being cursed skull. Now, as soon as you end up activating, let's say we activate one of the cursed skulls, 
then these eyeballs are going to end up turning green as well. So it's kind of a nice little indicator so you can know, okay, I can go and kill two bosses before we end up tackling the Cursed Skulls, because generally the Cursed Skulls are going to end up taking longer than just defeating the elite mobs, right? So anyways, as you end up completing the five-star dungeons based on the timer, uh, you're going to end up getting various rewards. Now, you're going to be able to get a gold tier reward uh, by completing the dungeon. Do they say what time you have to complete it? Uh, more than okay so <laughs> this is so stupid like okay devs uh you, you in order to get the gold tier reward which is going to be eight crystalline cores uh you end up getting that for having the timer be more than 50 percent remaining okay whatever generally i find it to be really glitchy though and it doesn't really work half the time uh but this would be great wouldn't it if you could just continuously get eight crystalline cores from the five star dungeons but no 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 here's the here's the big problem is that that golden tiered reward you can only get once a day yup they actually made it that stupid and then there's going to be the silver reward which you can only get two of those a day and they're going to give you three crystalline cores each and you got to do that with uh, more than 25 percent on the timer remaining and then there's going to be the bronze reward now the bronze reward you can get an unlimited amount per day it is not limited but it's only going to give you uh one lesser geo topside cash now what that's going to essentially do is more than average it's going to give you one crystalline core sometimes it can give you more but it's very uncommon now technically speaking this does mean that it's grindable but this does suck because the reason why i really really don't like this is it means that they essentially like the developers wasted all of their time setting up this whole timing mechanic just so that last minute the few developers that are left working on the game right now decided to get rid of it and make it so that the timer is essentially useless because you get three rewards so basically you complete three five star dungeons within the time limit and then the rest of them it doesn't matter you just complete them and get the stupid bronze reward like man a lot that is so uh so like frustrating and we know that the reason that they did it was so that they could try and sell their stupid greater caches which the greater caches would have sold anyways they didn't need to bully us into doing it right uh there's also going to end up being these which is going to be the cosmic gem boxes now here's something that's a little bit more interesting with these bad boys is that in u8 uh the boxes are going to end up dropping rainbow to shadow right or uh, well yeah rainbow to shadow as far as i know and then in u9 you're going to end up dropping uh shadow to radiant gems out of them but uh, different than all of the other u9 worlds in the game where you can end up dropping from shadow radiant to a, a rare being a stellar gem quality instead they take the stellar gems out of u9 top side so that they can throw them into u10 top side so it's kind of a lame way of them making U10 that much more useful because you're going to end up getting those stellar gems out of it, which, uh, yeah. And, and then another thing too that's really, really nice though, this is great for players starting Trove from this point onward, is that all of the gems, all of them, are going to end up uh, changing and being affected by this where they can only end up generating as fierce and arcane. Now, an arcane gem can only end up getting magic find on it. You can still roll max health, max health, uh, and then, you know, crit hit. But if you end up rolling that max health, you're never going to be able to get physical damage on an arcane gem. Uh, same with the fierce gems as well. Now, the cosmic gems are going to end up generating with light, which we'll talk about light in a minute. I already have videos talking about that in more detail. But the, the other thing, too, that's great about the gems is that they're always, the lesser gems are always, from this point on, when you end up getting them, going to end up generating with two stars. So they're going to have all of their stats. So it makes gem farming for the end game way less confusing, way less stupid. Like, it's, it's way better. That is a huge welcome change to be able to just focus on the gems that you want and actually end up getting uh, the end game stuff a lot easier. Now, the light stat, in short is going to be armor penetration. For some stupid reason, they ended up renaming it to light. I don't know why. But when you end up going to the Geo top side, essentially your damage is going to end up being cut in half. Uh, and then that's going to end up getting worse and worse when you get to U9 and U10. Even with the maximum amount of light, you're only going to be doing, uh, I think it's like 38% uh, damage or something like that in uh, U10. 
of your total damage so the more light that you have the more damage you're essentially doing to the enemies slowly bringing up your damage to that normal amount of damage that you do everywhere else in the game okay so it's pretty much gonna be like think of ultra shadow towers where you have your damage lessened but the light stat is going to end up breaking through that barrier which is kind of lame uh, you know because it's just a easy way that they can end up making us weaker for an area because unfortunately the game's code is limited to 100 million damage and thus they can't end up making us any stronger than this point because we're already doing max damage with so many other characters and the enemy's health can only end up going to a certain degree uh, you know they can't end up scaling that up either unfortunately so what I personally would like them to do, which uh, of course they're not going to, is just rebalance the entire game and bring all of our all of our numbers down so that 100,000 damage was actually good instead of being uh, way too low in this game. You know what I mean? So anyways, uh, we actually tackled a lot of the patch notes already. We talked about the five-star dungeons, talked about light. Uh, they, they say light and dark. Don't be fooled by this because the darkness stat is just going to be that armor stat that I mentioned that are on all of the enemies on Geo top side, okay? So don't get overly confused about that. Uh, like, seriously, I don't know why. Like, I really don't know why Trove has always done this. This has always been really a, a bad habit of the developers where they like to name things their own stupid thing rather than naming it something that's common and people will be able to understand. But I guess single-handedly makes my tutorials that much more valuable, right? So I guess thanks for, thanks for that, devs. Uh, then we talked about the gems already. Uh, the empowered gems you can in fact end up getting out of uh empowered gem boxes the empowered cosmic gems i mean and as you ended up noticing in the christology table you can actually end up crafting a box that will end up giving you only cosmic empowered gems however it's overly pricey it's not worth it there's no reason to go for it because the amount of resources that are involved with it being absolutely disgusting so let me just hop on over here if i can ever stupid chunk error uh not only are you gonna have to have maxed out christology which is difficult in its own regard but then these boxes are gonna be 25 five star dungeons down the toilet uh, and then the rest of the resources okay whatever 500 viridian 50 nitro that's pretty expensive honestly speaking and then a lunar soul on top of it like why aren't these just a lunar soul with maybe taking cosmic dust and cosmic dust is like it's so easy to get cosmic dust it literally like you're just gonna have it in droves thankfully these gems are probably some of the quickest gems that you're going to end up leveling up in the entire update because you end up getting cosmic gem dust for like loot collecting your uh, uh, crystal gear as well. And it's, it's pretty ridiculous. So uh, there's also going to end up being, yeah, there's a new augment item, which I, I still got to have a video that kind of explains this stuff in a little bit more uh, depth just because they're overly complicated. It's not as complicated as it sounds, but uh, there's going to be this new item right here, right? So for two Chaos Sparks, which essentially re-rolls a stat on a gem, you can end up getting a Chaos Flare. And what this basically is going to end up doing is on any of your gems, you can kind of see behind me right there, I've got two pearls uh, on my crit damage. We're calling them pearls now because it makes more sense to players. If I ended up using that new Flare item, it, it would essentially end up just taking one of these pearls off of a stat and randomly throwing it onto another stat. So I, I can actually, I'll, I'll even show you this right now as a prime example because I can end up crafting one of these and there's honestly no reason for me not to end up using it. So uh, it, this will actually be my first time using this too. So I'm interested to see. I, what I would ideally want is to get both of these pearls off of the crit damage and put all three of it into light. All right. So we see right there. It just associated it to a random slot, and now I've just got three pearls in all slots. So I would have to essentially get even more of these flares to hopefully end up getting better odds. Now, on an empowered gem, I would recommend that you actually use these because they're really good. However, for your lesser gems, just keep opening them until you end up getting ones that uh, end up rolling the three pearls onto the light. Because honestly speaking, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Now, uh, you know, stuff like the crit hit, I still got to roll off. But I don't have any dumb binding darkness that's still a resource that's super difficult for me to get. Uh, there's also going to end up being new helmets for all of the characters, level 1 to level 30, which is really, really cool. All of them have costumes now, so if you want, if you see them in your collections menu, it means that you have to 
uh, swap over to that class and then you're going to end up seeing yourself unlocking all of those helmets it's just how the game works of course you have to have all the characters unlocked in order to end up getting most of those helmets anyways if you don't have any of them but some of them are actually really cool some of them are kind of lame but uh, a lot of them are actually really really neat and i like them a lot uh, so then they talk about the crystal rarity. Yes, there's also going to be a new expertise thread. So I don't know why they call it this. Basically, in the expertise tab of your adventures, uh, you're going to end up having various quest lines that you can end up completing for various items, which I mean, you can see I haven't even done any of these milestones because I, I, there's just so many of them. And they're all like really tedious stuff that I just can't be bothered to do right now. But either way, uh, then there's a Trovi and Atlas, which is absolutely great. I love the fact that we actually have that. Uh, then there's also the store, which has uh, they have this new pack right here, which is going to be $100. It is a ripoff, uh, but it is going to end up giving you the sun and moon aura for your hat. Now, this was an aura that originally was added to the game back when they first added the gems to the game. There was a $100 pack that ended up giving you the aura. But the thing that's great about this new $100 pack is that the aura is in fact tradable. So you can actually buy it on the market from other players, which is really cool. Uh, the thing that kind of sucked about the aura itself was that it was an exclusive item that players like myself were benefited of having because we supported the game back in the day. So it's kind of a jerk move that they end up throwing it into a pack later on. As I always say with Trove, nothing is exclusive, only timely exclusive. So you only have it exclusive for a limited amount of time before they end up caving and being like, well, let's try and make as much money as we can on even the tiniest things. Let's throw this in the cash up as well, right? But uh, essentially the reason why this sucked was because these ended up giving mastery and lots of people were uh, missing the aura to end up getting that extra bit of mastery, right? Uh, so then there's also going to be the new caches, which these suck. Um, you know, they're, they're okay. I got pretty lucky on my unboxing of them, uh, but generally they're pretty bad. I would recommend if you're going to buy any of them, you only want to buy the expensive one because you're going to get the glowing box and that's going to guarantee you a rare. Otherwise with these, you're never going to get a rare. Like you barely get any rare drops out of the normal caches themselves. But uh, more so than that, you're going to end up getting crystalline cores. You get them 10 a pop. So if you buy the 33, it means you're getting 330 uh, crystalline cores and not really much else, honestly. But at least you'll end up getting one rare, which technically is worth it because of the amount of resources that you would end up spending to get the rare in general. And then there's going to be these dragon coin boosts, which is really, really weird. So uh, they, they go on to mention that they will double all of the dragon coins received from any source until uh, the allotted amount that you can see before you. So you can end up getting the 250 dragon coin boost. Then you could end up buying some dragon uh, caches and essentially you would end up getting an extra 250 dragon coins from the caches so long as you end up continuously and uh getting the dragon coins and that's going to end up lasting uh until it's there so uh, pretty much it's doubling your dragon coins for a certain amount uh of dragon coins which i i don't know why this was added like it's really weird uh and honestly just kind of seems like they're just trying to make a quick buck off of dragon coins being as disgusting as they are and dragons themselves being as disgusting as they are now the thing that's really cool about this update is that it doesn't entirely make dragons useless by any means but the crystal gear being something that you can very easily get as soon as you end up getting to geode uh, topside in u8 means that as you end up leveling that gear it very easily ends up becoming stronger than stellar gear so with stellar gear kind of taking a sidestep and becoming a lot less useful uh, it means that free-to-play players uh, and, you know, and people that honestly don't care about the dragon system and grinding your coins and stuff like that you're not really going to need magic fine in order to end up skipping your way past to the end game just because the gear is going to end up being really good which i think is great because so many people even now still are constantly begging for free stellar gear and stuff like that and it's like why you can literally go and grab some crystal gear and it's going to be way quicker way easier and everybody has access to it you don't need magic find you don't need a million dragons like you do in order to end up getting stellar drops but anyways let's go on so they also ended up increasing the star bar 
essentially you're only going to end up being able to complete the star bar uh, like five times per day now and uh, it's going to end up giving you some pretty cool rewards so for non-patron users uh, you're going to end up getting 500 cubits and 500 flux uh, total from the entirety or, or no no not total not total so uh, from the first star bar that you complete in the day you're gonna get 500 cubits 500 flux I don't know why it gives you 500 flux. The devs are seriously like they've lost their marbles and thinking that 500 flux actually does something in this game. Uh, but then patron users will get 1,500 cubits and uh, 1,500 flux total. Uh, and then uh, subsequently from uh, the other ones that you end up completing, you're going to end up getting less cubits. Uh, but instead of the flux, you're going to end up getting starlight pinata. So this is going to be a new... Uh, type of pinata that is going to be added uh, or in the game so they've got new styles for it new mounts and stuff like that i don't think you can end up getting a pinata egg from the uh, uh from the pinatas but honestly don't quote me on that i'm not sure so let's actually calculate this so for patron users you're going to be able to get 2700 cubits now uh and then for free to play players you're going to be able to get uh, 900 cubits so I think if I'm not mistaken that was that, that's quite a bit more uh, of extra cubits per day which means that you're gonna be able to get uh, a lot of stuff out of the store that much quicker even as a free-to-play player but I mean patron is something that almost everybody should have uh, so then they also ended up adding some new dragons which I can't I, I kind of made a little bit of a boo-boo and ended up crafting or using my dragon effigies to get both of these dragons um, which I honestly wouldn't recommend most of you do so there's gonna be this guy right here uh, I still gotta make a video talking about each of these dragons as individuals. I have videos showing both of the dragons off together, but I gotta make videos talking about any, each of them because this guy right here, which is absolutely disgusting, is extremely easy to get because you actually get pieces of it, like his dragon egg from mining the new ore on the geo top side. So essentially it's going to end up being a dragon. You're gonna get very very easily because you're going to be grinding lots of the new ore in general right and then there's going uh his crafting recipe is going to be this right here so uh, you know by the time you end up getting the amount of ore required in order to end up crafting the dragon honestly speaking you might end up having the proper amount of fragments or at least close to then there's going to be this guy right here and this is a beautiful dragon you're definitely going to want to grab this one as soon as you can however i would recommend that you use dragon effigy on it because he is super duper expensive super duper beautiful probably Probably one of my favorite dragons in the game just because not only does he have an impressive wingspan but it is once again another two-headed dragon which means that it's going to be very useful for those of you that can't afford to have a bazillion bombs because you're going to be able to just you know slam onto dungeons by using two of the heads which is great uh, the stats that you get off of them is pretty good as well but more so the reason why this guy sucks is because he's going to require you to have both a dark and light pegasus dragon egg now how do you actually get those in the chaos core crafter you're gonna have to craft yourself dark vaults in order to end up getting fragments for the dark egg and then light vaults in order to end up getting fragments for the light egg absolutely ridiculously expensive dragon because you could use the light egg to end up crafting the light pegasus dragon but then you're gonna need another light egg to end up uh crafting this two-headed dragon and essentially the exact same with the dark one being able to craft the dark dragon and then needing another dark dragon egg in order to end up crafting this so their their reasoning for this i can ex only expect was they wanted to make it uh so that stellar and radiant souls and stuff like that were going to end up being that much more expensive but unfortunately the big mistake that they made with these cash is uh, uh that it cost diamond dragonite and despoiled divinity and and even chaos course which is a time gated resource devs and because of it people can't just invest all of their souls into it and thus the souls are I mean, let's just let's just take a look at this. Let's look at a stellar soul. 475 each. <laughs> I mean, you don't really need those for anything anyways. But anyways, let's move on. So there's going to be a whole bunch of different uh, styles that were added to the game. Spear styles and stuff like that. These are not just the geode ones. So you're going to be using your style savers to end up getting them. Uh, the loading screen will now feature fan art, uh, which is really cool. Daily challenges for Friday will now give uh, six... Uh, Luminopolis rampages on the half hour throughout the day and will not run rampages on the hour instead which is kind of weird uh, I guess the point is that rampages are gonna be every hour on Friday but it's gonna be on the half hour mark so 
instead of the rampage starting at one o'clock, it's going to be at one thirty. 2.30, so on and so forth. But I, I guess the point is that we're going to see nothing but Rampage challenges, or, well, at least six of them anyways, which uh, I guess is still pretty good anyways, but that's still six hours of playtime just for that. Uh, so the newly crafted ring boxes from this point on uh, are really good too because as you end up using them, rather than your character throwing the box on the ground and then you end up getting the ring, uh, which would actually cause a lot of lag to the servers uh, and stuff. Same with Pinatas doing that as well. Uh, essentially what they did is now you'll just click the box and you just instantly end up getting the ring in your inventory, which is good. Um, makes it a lot easier for opening these boxes. But the thing is that I still find it ironic that they did that so that they could end up reducing lag and then they gave everybody daily Pinatas. Like, <laughs> okay guys, whatever. Uh, so there's going to be a uh, glorious gladiator is now also uh, unlocks after 500 bomber royale kills. Uh, this is going to be uh, retroactive as well for those of you that have already done it. Uh, they also have a new uh, a additional information. OK, uh, they have a new crafting table for some reason. You're not going to be able to craft your mounts out of any of the crafting tables anymore. Uh, you're going to have to craft this table right here and it's not going to give you new mounts or anything. It's just going to be the pen blocks and stuff like that. But for some reason, they love their extra crafting tables in this game. I honestly don't know why. Uh, the other really big ones to keep in mind is that um, the Dino Tamer ultimate ability is now affected by movement speed, making it one of the fastest farmers in the entire game now. Uh, and it is really, really cool for that. They also added a cannon to the automatic uh, or atomic automatic automatic. Yeah, frigate. Uh, which was a chaos chess item uh, they added a what's new option on the console menu to link to the most recent patch notes in the web browser this is uh, of course mostly going to end up affecting console users but you guys on console are probably sitting here wondering when are you going to end up getting the u10 update well then i got news for you buddy it's going to be coming out either halfway through january of 2019 to early february of 2019 they haven't given us a proper release date for it yet and knowing the devs they're not going to give us a release date until maybe it's like a week away or something but honestly what i'm hoping is going to come from this is that they'll be able to fix all of the issues that are probably going to be very prevalent with uh the console port you know ps4 as far as i've heard from most of you guys is still pretty broken and unplayable uh more so than that though i would hope that they kind of take our feedback and actually rebalance some of the numbers make the crystalline cores a little less gross but honestly speaking i think they're probably just gonna ignore us on that one usually when these updates end up going live they don't end up uh buffing anything for the player's advantage because they think that they know better even though the devs literally don't play this game and all of the feedback is that this is bad which uh, again you know I'm, I'm not saying that i I am against them nerfing the crystalline cores from what they originally were on the test server but they nerfed it a little bit too far like I feel that in most regards people are just going to end up quitting before they end up trying to get uh you know their stuff maxed out so anyways there's gonna be a couple additional updates right here uh, I'll include all of this in the links down below but they uh uh, changed it so that the rampage alerts will now appear while you're on geo topside cursed skulls have been removed from one star dungeons that didn't make sense in, in geo topside which was which was disgusting so it's really nice that they ended up doing that because otherwise uh, basically certain dungeons would have enemies spawning outside of the dungeon because the dungeon was too small uh, five star dungeons should now appropriately clear once completed which they still don't entirely uh, and then they also changed uh, well they changed a couple little things with the map legend and the dragon eggs being uh, dragon egg fragments being uh, deconstructed and loot collected and stuff like that and essentially that's gonna do it uh, the other one thing that I do want to mention which is a big big bug going on which is not really hurting the game but it's funny is that the vampiric uh, emblem I, I, I'm, I can only assume that this is under the same code as the revenant life steal so it's just instantaneous you're just going to end up taking life out of an enemy and it's, uh, it makes this you know you're you have a lot more survivability you don't you technically don't need to have death defying everywhere anymore because this is going to give you a lot of survivability and it's not going to drain your pots but uh there's a chance where as you're defeating an enemy and they're defeating you at the same time you can die and life steal in that last second and then you can literally walk around the game with your screen being black and white your screen saying press uh, the button to respawn uh, which is on PC, so it's just press E to respawn. But you can still play the game, grab all the loot, do dungeons and everything, and essentially you're still playing the game as an alive character 
but you just have this filter over your screen making things ugly. Now, your characters can't be invisible as well because when you die, of course, you don't have a game model and thus you can end up being on mounts and as far as everybody else is concerned, you're invisible, so they'll just see a mount running around with no rider, which is a pretty funny glitch, which, uh, I mean, I still hope that they end up fixing it. Uh, and then otherwise, there's a couple other things that they ended up changing, but honestly, we tackled most of the big stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. Very much appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Overall, I actually really enjoy the update, most of all because it's not just Geode Caves. Like, seriously, we finally got an update where we can just grind to our heart's content. And that's what I like about it. I actually like the fact that the Crystal Gear does seem to be rarer. Uh, more particularly, Crystal 3. I like the fact that we can't get that day one. It's actually really, really difficult to get a full set of Crystal 3 that you're going to be able to use on a character. Now, uh, a pro tip I would recommend is even if you end up getting a Crystal 3 that generates with health regen second stat, keep it because Crystal 3 is so rare that it's worth hanging on to for whenever they end up giving us an event where we can re-roll the second stat because that does in fact work on Crystal Gear as, long, uh, as well as it does with all of the other gear in the game. So any Crystal ge 3 gear that you get, unless it's a weapon for one specific character like the Vanguard, I got three Crystal 3 fists, man, not including the one that I'm using right now. And, uh, I just had to loot collect them because I can't use them, right? Anyways, keep them. Thanks for watching, though, folks. Let me know your opinion about the update. What do you think? You think it's good? Console players, are you mad about it? You shouldn't be. You're going to be getting this very, very soon. Don't worry about it. And, uh, well, hopefully we're going to see some more updates in the future. At least Trove is still continuously being developed. We don't know anything about uh, Gardening 2.0. That was cut from this update, uh, as well as a couple other big things as well that were promised. Bomber Royale Season 2 is just not a thing. Even though the game references it being a thing, there's not actually any new Bomber stuff. But, anyways... Thanks for watching. Very much appreciated. Don't forget to like, sub, hit that notification bell. If you want to support me, you can always sponsor the YouTube channel with that join button down below. Buy some of the real life merch. Or if you don't have any money and still want to help me out, check the link down below to Gawkbox, which is a way you can donate to me for absolutely free. Sign on and stay epic, everybody.